Hi, and welcome to another edition of Math with Mr. Douglas. Today, we take a look at the topic of order of operations. Yes, let's take a look at that famous saying of bed mass, or maybe you're a PEMDAS kind of student. Here we go. Today, we are talking about one of my favorite topics, and that would be the order of operations. And what I really love about the start of this lesson is it's going to quickly uh, tell me where in the world you're from. So if I asked you, do you know a saying about order of operations? Really quickly, um, kids will say one of two things. They will say uh, bed mass or they will say PEMDAS and maybe uh, I've also heard of BOD mass um, as well, um, but these are the two uh, really popular ones. And as some of you may or, or may not know, is that I'm from uh, the uh, wonderful country of Canada. There's my little crazy maple leaf, very sketched. There we go. So this is Canada. There's my flag. There we go. There's Canada. And if you're a Canadian, you went probably with bed mass. But if you are from uh, the lower country below below Canada, there uh, you use PEMDAS. So a lot of Americans will use PEMDAS. Uh, I heard bod mass from a lot of people from Europe. So uh, that's really really interesting. It does the exact same thing. So this is going to tell you. This is kind of the rule. So B stands for brackets. The equivalent is parentheses. It's much harder to say, and it also sounds a lot cooler, but brackets. Um, e is the same, um, which is going to be exponents. And then you can see uh, the M and the D are both uh, switched, but they, they mean the same thing. And we'll get to that in a, in a second, so multiply and divide. Multiply and divide. And then um, A and S are exactly the same. It just basically means add and subtract. Okay. So now that we have that, I need to add a couple things to this. There are some ties. There are some ties. Um, we have two ties. Dividing and multiplying is a tie, uh, as well as adding and subtracting is a tie. So these ones all tie. Which means even though you see uh, multiply perhaps come before divide and add come before subtract, it actually is a tie. And we have a rule for when there's a tie. So this is the tiebreaker. And we all have tiebreakers, right? You guys know about tiebreakers in life. The tiebreakers is very, very simple. The tiebreaker just says you need to go left to right. So if you see two things, multiplying or uh, dividing, um, you have to go left to right. However, there is an even more special rule. Uh, super special. It's super special. I'm going to put it in blue. And it's called the DPP, which breaks the rule. So D, that was a horrible D, isn't it? There we go. Let's just start this over. Again. It's called DPP. D, D, P, P. Okay. So DPP, uh, and <laughs> uh, what does it mean? It means division priority priority principle. Not principle as in like your school principle, but your, your principle. The division priority principle states that you can divide at any time to make your life easier. It takes the priority. That's really, really cool. Okay, so you got all the rules. Let's get to it and what this actually looks like now. Boom, there go the rules. Here come the examples. Yes, your notes are gonna be full of examples. So let's start off with some nice, easy ones. Six plus four minus seven. Okay, so remember we also, I'm gonna use bed mass, okay? So I'm gonna use bed mass because I'm Canadian, so I think bed mass is the best. And bed mass, this is what you do. 
Ask yourself, are there any brackets in the question? Oh my gosh, there is a bracket, yes. That means you need to do all the work inside the bracket first, okay? You need to. So what's four minus seven? Well, it's gonna be negative three. Great. Now, you ask yourself, is there an exponent? Maybe you don't know what an exponent is. An exponent, just as, a, as an FYI, an exponent is that little number that kind of lives in the top right hand corner. Um, and there's no exponents right now. Um, and is there any dividing or multiplying? Nope. Uh uh. How about adding and subtracting? Well, yeah, this is an adding question. So what's 6 plus uh, negative 3? And that's just going to be 3. Now, a couple of things. This is a, a Mr. Douglas kind of uh, expectation is that you show every single step. As you can see, I showed all the steps. And your question will slowly get smaller, won't it? It actually kind of comes in the shape of a little triangle kind of thing. It's like a triangle, like that. Um, and I expect everybody to do that. Um, oftentimes, I just want the slash. So I should be seeing your question getting smaller uh, as we do our math. Let's go to another one. Let's use green. Um, let's say we had something like this. Negative 11. Uh, negative 11 plus 6 minus, in another bracket, 9 minus 10. 9 minus 10. Okay. And we don't need this. That. So we get two brackets going on. We're going to do the work inside the brackets first. So what's negative 11 plus 6? That's going to give us negative uh, 5. And what's 9 minus 10? That's going to be minus 1. Notice how I'm trying to keep everything in brackets, really nice. Now there's a very special minus minus here, which is going to go and basically make a plus. And what's negative five plus one? That's gonna be negative four. Everything got smaller there. Okay, well those are looking um, not too bad, aren't they? Not too bad. Let's go and do some more examples. Boom, here we go. Uh, what would happen if you had, um, how about this one? Six times uh, nine plus one. Six times nine plus one. Oh, okay. Well, remember again, we're using bed mass. Are there any brackets? Uh, uh. How about exponents? Nope. I'm dividing. I don't see any. How about multiplying? Is there some multiplying? There absolutely is. So we have to go and multiply first. So we're going to go and multiply 6 times 4, and that's, or sorry, 6 times 9, that gives us 54. And then we have the adding 1, so that's just a nice, easy uh, 55. But here we go, er, er, er. common kid mistake alert, common kid mistake alert. Here we go, the KKM. Let's go and take a look at this back uh, in slow motion, and I'll show you the common kid mistake. Some kids get so tempted to do this first because it's so easy. 9 plus 1. You know the answer is 10, don't you? So that means you'd have 6 times 10, which is just going to be 60. Boom. All done. But that would make you, you got it, sad. Yes. Crying and tears start. You got it wrong because you didn't follow the order of operations. So you need to be following the order of operations. Okay. Let's continue, shall we? And that was really an important thing. So don't get tricked. Sometimes math teachers will try and trick you. Um, I don't know why we try and do that to kids. That's just not nice, is it? Okay, now more, more examples. More examples, Mr. Douglas, more examples. Um, well, let's try this one. So let's try the good old uh, 9 minus 4 times uh, 15 divided by uh, 3. Okay, and again, we're following bed mass. Are there any brackets? Uh-uh. Exponents? Nope. Dividing? Yes. And there's also multiplying. So, what did I, what did I say about multiplying and dividing? Multiplying and dividing, I said, was a tie. And the tiebreaker was you're supposed to go left to right. You don't need to write that down. You've already written that down, right? Left to right. So if I saw multiplying here and dividing here, it's a tie. I'm supposed to go left to right. However, there was the DPP. That's the DPP. 
And it's a division priority principle, which means you can divide any time. At any time, and it makes your life easier. I want you to think about this right now. And hopefully this will make more sense. If I went left to right, I would have to go and multiply 4 times 15. Now 4 times 15, 60, is not easy to do in your head. So watch what happens when I go and I divide first. So I'm going to go and divide first. Now I'm going to divide 15 by 3. And that's going to be positive 5. Oops, there we go. Let me just uh, rewrite that. So it's going to be positive 5. So it's going to look times in by 5. There we go. Now this becomes a lot easier. Now this is 9 minus 20, which is going to be negative 11. That was a lot easier to do. When you get to go and divide first, it's going to make your life easier. And my job is to make your life easier. So <clears throat> do always try and look for that. That's really, really important. Now, we've talked about um, the brackets and exponents and things like that. So what if you had um, 7 plus 3 squared minus 9 times negative 2? Okay. So, good old bed mass. There is a bracket, but nothing else is going on inside the bracket. And there is an exponent. So now, you're going to have to go and do this. So we'll do this part. This is 3 to the power of 2, which means 3 times 3. So we end up getting this. 7 plus 9 minus 9 times negative 2. Again, we're going to do our multiplying here. Now this is an interesting one. So we're going to do our multiplying. And sometimes kids will say, is this, is this negative 9 times negative 2? Or is this 9 times negative 2? And that's a great question. It's a great question. So some kids wonder, is this negative 9 times negative 2? Or is this 9 times negative 2? Now notice that in, in this example, in the second one, where's that minus sign? Well, that minus sign is just staying right here. It's just staying there. These are both exactly the same. Just remember though, if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna do it with this way, then that minus sign is still there. Don't forget about that. I prefer, I actually prefer uh, this way. Thinking of it that way. That that's that's my own preference. You're gonna get the same answer anyway. So seven. So this would become so watch what happens. This is plus, and let's say I said um, so plus nine, and I said minus 9 times negative 2, which is going to be a negative 18. But what does negative negative become? It becomes positive. Okay, great. Now I'm going to go left to right. So 16 plus 18. And, ooh, that's a tough one, isn't it? I wonder how, I wonder how you're doing that in your head when you look at 16 plus 18. 16 plus 18 um, is going to be 33. I think, no, 34. 34? Yeah, I think so, 34. And I wonder how you did that. For me, I thought of 15 plus 15 plus a little bit of extra, plus 1 plus 3. Because I knew this was 30. I knew that would be 4. That's how I kind of thought about it a little bit in my head. Uh, you're like, where did 15 come from? Um, I just went and made these both 15s. And then I had to go and account for that with the 1 plus 3. That's just some good mental math kind of tricks um, to know. And of course, you get a giant slash. There you go. Order of operations. Good times. Okay, now that you have the basics of the order of operations, it's time to look at a few interesting, complex situations. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to get into some of the trickier ones that you're going to see. Remember, those are the rules. So you have the tiebreakers and DPP, and uh, of course, you're thinking about BEDMAS or PEMDAS. So sometimes, we're going to get into some, some examples. So sometimes you're going to see things that, and this is going to be really, really tricky. I don't know why I'm doing this off the bat. I'm all over a, how should I do this? Let's go with 5 
times, five times 45 divided by nine. We'll do that, okay. So you see this big division, right? This is actually a dividing question. Uh, another way that I could have uh, written this is seven minus five squared plus three divided by, because don't forget that this line, this line is a dividing symbol, right? So that is this. Okay, so that's a, a, a good way to be thinking about it. And as you guys know, you have to do this stuff inside the brackets first. So we'll squeeze it in there. So let's go and do that, shall we? Let's go and do that boom, right here. So I'm going to do my exponent first. So it's 7 minus 25 plus 3. I'm going to go left to right. So 7 minus 25 is going to be negative 18 uh, plus 3. So I'm going to get negative uh, 15 like that. Okay, so my top is going to be negative 15. And the bottom right here, I'm going to use the division principle. So I'm going to go and do that dividing, 45 divided by 9. And I'm going to get 5 times 5, which is just going to be 25. So I'm going to get on top negative 15 over 25. Now don't forget, you always need to simplify. So ask, what could you divide by in both sides? Or sorry, by both the top and the bottom. And that's going to be 5. So I'm going to go and do that. And I'm going to get negative 3 over 5. That's my final answer. So that's when you see the giant bar like that. Really important to remember. Another thing I want to go and focus on a little bit is uh, exponents. Because exponents can be really, really tricky. So again, we're going to kind of go back to this sort of uh, question. And... I'm going to kind of set it up. Ah, we'll, we'll set it up. Set it up kind of like that. <clears throat> and I want to just focus again on uh, this part right here. On this part. And again, this says 7 minus 5 squared, which is different than if I had have written uh, basically it like this. So. How can I actually write this? Let me go back here. Let me just go like this and go say, say it said this, 7 plus a negative 5 squared plus 10 divided by 2. These are two different, very, very different things. So <clears throat> this one, so I'll kind of do this one right, whoop, right there. Um, this was a 7 minus, what's 5 squared? That's 25. So it's 7 minus 25 plus... Um, 10 divided by 2, which is going to be 5. But over here, we'll use, we'll use a light blue. This will say 7 plus, this says negative 5 times negative 5, which is going to be positive 25. And then still plus 5 here. So <clears throat> the big difference here is this was like minus and this was plus, completely different. That is going to be very, very important for you to notice when you're tackling order of operation questions. Thanks everybody for tuning in to this edition of Math with Mr. Douglas. Hopefully you got everything straightened out and in order. Until next time, have a great day.